and we should probably label it. What is the age we live in? If you go back over 100 years, you had the machine age, you had the industrial age, you had the jet age, you had the space age, you had the computer age. What do we have today? This is, yes, who said that? Congratulations. There'll be a prize for you, right? <laughs> this is the age of connection and communication. Look at what the world and how the world has evolved in the last 20 years since the internet, since social media, since digital engineering and communications. What has happened? We are a smaller world. We are connecting. Now, there is a responsibility that we must put on every single individual, professionally, personally, or what have you, to speak up. To stand up, speak up, and get your voice heard. That is a responsibility. Whether you're entrepreneurs, whether you're educators, whether you're professionals in any walk of life, particularly technologists today, because it is technology that I feel is the driving engine for all of these industries. So I'm going to cover with you today some tools out of my, out of my toolkit. And I wrote this book, No Fear Speaking, because I wanted a simple, easy to learn and use and apply toolkit that anybody can apply to become a more confident, dynamic communicator. So we can really fully connect. I don't care whether you're standing in front of a small group or a, at a conference table, a, a large group, or you're on radio or television, or you're sitting down one-on-one, -on -one, or you're making a, a, a negotiation with someone. It all involves what? Communication. Not this type, necessarily. I, I had a, I, as, my, as my kids were growing up, I had a laugh because they were talking to each other like this at the table. And I couldn't figure out what they were doing. I thought they were playing video games and they were having a conversation. I said, this is the dinner table. And so I want to make sure that we all understand the importance of communication being a look in the eye, a hug, a handshake, a warm, feeling you get with someone. We should never, ever replace that, should we? That's what attracts people to us. That's where trust comes from. That's where respect comes from, is that embrace, that heartfelt connection. So what I would like to talk about here are the five C's of what it takes to be a commanding speaker. And I'm going to emphasize the first one. Commanding means not George S. Pat, I will get this job done. Commanding is inspiring. It's influencing people. It's helping people to move in the direction they want to go. That's commanding. It's not standing up and saying, I gave a great speech today because I didn't say any ums or us. And I, I said every word I was supposed to say the attention and the focus of a great presentation is the audience. Your audience is your product. Do you care? The first ingredient is caring. And caring means, do I, do I really have a sense of understanding? Am I really available to my audience to let them know that I care about what they care about. Do you know your audience well enough to know what your audience cares about? Because you better darn well care about it. Caring. You can replace that word with responsible. Because people who don't care aren't responsible. Comfortable. Now, I can tell you most people will come up and stand in front of an audience and they can be as comfortable one-on-one -on -one, and when they, when they approach a large group or a small group, something gets diluted, something gets added. Of course then, the idea of course is that as a speaker, as a communicator, 
is you're having really a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your audience, aren't you? I'm having a one-on-one -on -one with you, and with you, and with you. I'm having a one-on-one -on -one with you. i got to tell you a story, real quick. I'm seven years old, my father says, black and white TV, he's watching black and white TV, you have rabbit ears pointing out of the TV set. I'm upstairs, Joey, come on down here, you got to see this. Okay, I'm seven years old. This is back in the late 50s. And I'm hearing this bellowing sound. And uh, the camera's panning the audience, and it's a huge audience at a stadium. And it's one man with microphones in front of him. Bill Graham. Billy Graham crusade. One man speaking to all of these people as comfortable as you might be speaking to your best friend at lunch. I looked, I said, wow, I want to do that. Well, that inspired me. I said, one man could talk to all these people. How could that be? Pretty comfortable. A person's got to be comfortable in their own skin to stand up there and go, I'm just here and you're over there. And you know what really public speaking really is? Public speaking is this. I'm looking at you, looking at me. I see you, see me. How, how complicated is that? Right? And you know what comfortability is? Comfortability is, I'm going to get used to that. And so when I tell my, my clients as coaching, I say, one of your skill building exercises I'm going to have you do between sessions is this, go to places where there's lots of people and just stand there and look at them. <laughs> what could happen? <clears throat> and let me know if you're still alive after that. <laughs> because comfortability is, do you have a tolerance for people? Do you have a tolerance or a, a, a threshold of acceptance for lots of people around you? That's really what it is. So go to a theater before it starts filling up and stand at the side, you know, and with the screen behind you and watch people walk in and just stand there and get, get, get the sense that they're waiting for you to come in and speak. And just get the sense of like having them, experiencing them. That's comfort, okay? Because you know, if you put your audience at ease, it's because the speaker is at ease, putting that, that audience at ease, correct? That's a main thing. The audience will always go the way the speaker goes. You ever notice that? Well, here's the next one. Well, <laughs> credibility. What is credibility? Credibility says, I know that I know. I'm not arrogant about it, but I know that I know. But I better darn well prove my point. Because if you're going to command any industry or command any group, people got and you did a lot of credibility, by the way, really liked your presentation because you proved it. You gave a lot of support sources in your presentation, you see? And support sources say, I did my homework. You know, you don't want to make a point unless you can back it up. We're a very debatable society, aren't we? You know, people want to challenge you all the time. You make a point, you go, well, what about this? What about that? You've been a court of law and you've seen these these shows and on um, television where you have to prove beyond reasonable doubt. If you can't prove beyond reasonable doubt, where you can, one side or the other is going to win. You have to prove beyond reasonable doubt. The point you're making is true, so back it up with support sources. I have an entire chapter in my book dedicated to that. That's how important it is. You want to command an audience? Be a credible speaker. And make your points with credibility, backed up with documented evidence. Understand that one? Yeah? Here's another one for you. Confident. Confidence. Confidence. You know what money is? It's an idea backed by confidence. If we don't have confidence in the dollar, what happens to it? It loses value. And if nations around the world lose confidence in the dollar, if I don't have confidence that a plumber's going to do the job, you think I'll hire that person? If I have a choice of three plumbers and one of them really gave me confidence they're going to get the job done, I'm going to hire that person. The confidence in public speaking is not something where you're hooraying all the time and you're just this motivational, out boy attitude and you're jumping up and down and it's nothing but marketing hype like an infomercial. That's not confidence. 
Confidence is certainty of what you know. That you can deliver that certainty without any hesitation or any backtracking. You know what that is? That's knowing what you know. That's confidence. And I say you can have a 350 pound, four foot seven guy with Coke bottle glasses, and that person can look as confident as anyone because it's not out there. That's the difference. Now, ooh, charismatic. You notice I put the heart in there. Why? Because charismatic does not mean, you know, a, a, a religious zealot or a political fanatic. Charismatic means you can take your heart and your soul and extend it to your audience and make them feel what you're feeling. You're out of your body a little bit. You're sort of extended out a little bit. You're not in here. You're out here. I did a lot of performing art work in my life. I'm a singer. I, I've trained professionally. I've done a lot of recording. I've trained uh, uh, singers and coached them. And I had my own music production company, still do. And you guys are lovely, by the way. Great job. I have to give you kudos, OK? And I have to tell you, when, you have, when you're singing a song, you've got to send it out. It doesn't remain over here. You could feel it, but if the audience doesn't feel it, what good is it? Because that's what you're walking in to spend your 75 bucks a night in that concert. That, that, those dollars, that performing artist's ability to get that emotion across and get them give you their rendition of what that song is all about is what you pay for. That's charismatic. That is the passion, the purpose-driven passion that you bring to everything you say, whether it's a song, everything you mean, you're bringing purpose to you. Root to, to, your, to your work, to a one-on-one. -on -one. You're showing up. You're showing up. What does it mean to show up? It doesn't mean physically. When I want my speakers to show up after I train them, I want to see who they are in front of their audience. I want that to be conveyed. And every single one of you, I know that you might not consider yourself speakers, but you are. Communicate every day. You're creating an effect on people every day. You're influencing people every day. Why not inspire them with being a more commanding speaker? Okay? Now what I did is I've noticed that I had to break this down even further. These are qualities, aren't they? Which you see up here. Well, I had to break these down even further because uh, I have a major section of my book called Authentic Versus Synthetic Speakers. Okay? This is where you have the authentic being the genuine, the individual himself, herself, the natural person. The synthetic is a hodgepodge of all kinds of things. Like I think I'll, today I'll just add Meryl Streep to Clint Eastwood and come up with some identity. I think they'll like that. <laughs> because it's a winning one. Everybody loves them. But in the meantime, you're on the back burner. What happened to you? You didn't show up. So we're going to knock this out. I did this in a little bit about what's called the dichotomy. Authentic versus synthetic, so we're going to look at some traits now, okay? You ready for this? First one, extroverted, introverted. What do I mean by that? Extroverted, your attention's out there, not in here. If you're in here, what happened to your audience? Gone. You just alienated them because you're thinking, this is why it is so important to rely on what you know rather than a script. I am an unscripted coach. I help people rely on what they already know. So they're extroverted. So they walk and they, oh, you can have trigger words or prompter phrases that tell you what to do next. But don't leave yourself out of the picture when you're speaking. Because your job, responsibility, your crusade, I should say, is that you're leading them somewhere. And you want to be out here. That's where all the action is, right out in front of you, rather than in here. You see? Next, expressive rather than impressive, you say, as a speaker. Oh, I'm really going to impress them today. 
You'll impress them more when you're expressing rather than impressing. You know, and a person trying to impress is the attention's on themselves again. It's more introverted than it is extroverted, isn't it? So be very expressive. Unleashed speakers. Unleash yourself. Express what you want to say. Give them a feeling when you're telling your story that what you're feeling, get them to feel it. When you're hearing something, get them to hear it. Describe it so that they can see it the way you see it. Take them through that journey so you're expressing. You'll get more impact on your audience that way than ever. Interested rather than interesting. I'll tell you what's interesting is that step, that chair, because that just attracts attention. Do you want to be an object? Be interesting. <laughs> Objects are interesting. We're not that way. We're alive, sentient, human beings that look at life with curiosity and discovery that makes us interested this is the problem most people have when they walk up they say well you know help me with networking it's the same as dating <laughs> i remember giving a a major workshop called on dating this was at a, at a university when i was in pennsylvania what do you say after you say hello was the title of this workshop well, look, what are you interested in? What are you curious about? Again, where's your attention when you're speaking? Not on oneself, because you have a propensity then to start talking about yourself. And isn't that a turn off? Right? Natural, artificial. You're already okay. You're okay the way you are. Don't try to add to it. Don't try to mix in some kind of alloy. Right? You're cool. Show up. Hello. Thank you. Natural. Artificial. You see the dichotomy here? You see the yin and yang of this? An effortless presentation is one which is not forced or pushed. You know how you get effortless in life? And I got to tell you, I've had some experience as an athlete. I've had some experience as an artist. And every single one of those vocations takes practice. Yes, practice. Repetition. Repetition. You want to teach kids? Then get them to discover that it takes repetition and practice to be competent. Then practice your speeches. Put a recording. Never, never, never look in the mirror and give your presentation because that's introverted. Look around your environment and give some idea of what you're about to connect with. When you see your environment, look and connect at least to your message. Connect to your audience. And then, of course, lastly, connect the message to your audience. And as an unleashed speaker, you have the ability now to drive your audience, to drive them to a call to action, to get them inspired as leaders. And so from the standpoint of being in the age of connection, you have now connect to your message with a belief, connect to your audience that you care about them so that you can connect your message to them without a problem. Because only then and then you'll be able to stand up, you will stand up with your voice intact, being there with you, your own level of inspiration and influence on the world around you, and now you can you can be able to get your own true voice across and make a difference in the world as a leader. Okay? Thank you very much.